Good morning and welcome to the first day of the official press conferences for the college football playoff semifinal at the Allstate Sugar Bowl. Please turn off all your cell phones for our press conferences. Today's first press conference features Texas def defensive coordinator Pete Kwiatkowski. We'll have 15 minutes of availability with Coach Kwiatkowski. Then we'll open availability with five Texas defensive players. After Coach makes a brief opening statement, we'll open the floor to questions. Please wait for the microphone to ask your question, and please identify yourself by name and media outlet. Thank you. Coach? Hi, good morning. Well, obviously, we're uh, very excited to be here. You know, starting um, last January after our season got done, you know, the guys go back to work, and the guys put in a lot of, a lot of time and energy to get to this point, and uh, obviously very excited to be here. And... Um, Obviously, playing a, a quality opponent, and um, who we, uh, who I have a history with, and um, who uh, the team has a history with from uh, facing them last year, and so we're all excited to uh, see what we can uh, put out there um, on the field, and um, see if we can uh, play like we we have played uh, all all year long. All right, thanks, Coach. We'll open it up to questions. We'll go right here in the front row. Uh, Ogmar Richardson, orangebuzz.com. Uh, Pete, your third down defense has been outstanding throughout the, this entire year. What has been the key for you guys to get off of third downs? Um, well, it starts with we've made an emphasis because we weren't as good uh, last year um, in, on third down, so that was a huge emphasis in the off season uh, through camp and all season long. And then at the end of the day, you know, we, we design the, the defenses and the calls and then the guys have just done a great job of executing all year long. Um, they understand the importance of it and obviously take uh, a lot of pride in it. And um, um, the results um, are what they are. All right, left side, second row. PK, when we began the season, you talked about the need for greater urgency when it came to forcing turnovers. You know, obviously you started the year really well and kind of hit a lull mid part of the year and then picked it back up. Just overall, how have you felt the unit's done and, and kind of respond to that challenge of forcing more turnovers? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> obviously a lot better than, it, than it's been. Um, I've been through a lot of, a lot of seasons where um, we've had seasons like this where the ball's bounced our way or we've, or we've created the, the opportunities to, to get the ball. Um, I just think the guys, again, are executing the, the confidence level, the, um, the ability to know what they're doing, be able to execute what they're doing, and then have the, having the awareness to attack the ball in, in the situations um, that present themselves. And, um, again, it comes back to the emphasis. We, we talked about the third down emphasis, and the turnovers was a huge emphasis. And so, um, as coaches, we emphasize that, the players – build on it and then um, with the confidence, the experience that uh, the, the guys have, they, they, don't get, they don't get caught, caught up in so much um, worrying about um, their alignment and their assignment and just getting and surviving. Now there, there's more familiarity with uh, what they're supposed to do. And so now they're, they're able to take it to that next, next step, um, um, attacking the ball. We'll stay right here in the second row on the left side. Joe Cook with Inside Texas. What has Tavondre Sweat allowed you to do with the rest of your defense? And then Tavondre's a fifth-year senior. He's just an older human being than a lot of the guys he's facing. How is that just an advantage to be 23, 24 when facing maybe 19 and 20-year-olds? Yeah, so there, there's, two, there's two pieces to Tavondre. Um, obviously, the physical stature that you, you mentioned, but also his level of maturity and growth as a teammate. Um, a leader has been um, has been awesome um, from the first year that we got here to, to now to see his growth and how how he approaches um, how he communicates with the, with the guys not not so when it's going great but when it's not going when we face adversity he, he's a, he's a he's a very inf influential guy in that locker room and so to, to see his growth. From a leadership standpoint, it's been awesome. And then, yeah, he's a big dude that's, you know, there, there's an athlete somewhere inside that body. That's what we always joke about. But he is um, 
hard to move. He eats up a lot of space. He takes multiple blockers. And so that frees up the linebackers, um, gives us a little bit more, um, a bit of a luxury to be able to play with lighter boxes um, because of what those two guys inside can do um, in the run game. We'll go to the front row on right side here. Um, Chip Brown with horns 24-7. PK, um, can you talk about the challenge of trying to get pressure on Penix against the Joe Moore award-winning offensive line? Yeah. And secondly, it seemed like some of the issues in the past defense seemed to come when you were trying to protect a lead. Um, can you talk about what was going on against Houston and, and TCU and K-State? Um, so trying to get to uh, Penix, he does – he does a, obviously the offensive line does a good job of protecting, but he does it goes hand in hand. Um, you know, when the quarterback gets rid of the ball on time um, and is in rhythm, it's you're not going to get there. So, uh, from a from a defensive perspective, the coverage and the and the rush they go hand in hand. Um, most of the sacks that w that we've gotten or anybody gets is because the coverage. Um, Forces the quarterback to hold it, right? Confuse them, right? Or quarterbacks trying to do, do more um, with it than um, they should, and then because rarely, rarely do we get um, blowaways, right? Where guys just, you know, unless they bust the protection, and the uh, the Washington offensive line does a really good job. They're very athletic. They do a good job um, working together. Um, Obviously, communicate very well, and um, they don't they don't they don't bust very much. And so, yeah, we got a we got a huge challenge for, in front of us. And then, in reference to um, the 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 late, I, I don't know. I guess you're, you're referring to a lot, lot of it's big plays, right? And <laughs> whether it's a coverage coverage bust or guys in position, it just doesn't make a play on the ball. Um, you know, and then some of it is tackling, you know. It's a short short throw, and we don't get him on the ground. And then it goes from a five-yard gain to a 20-yard gain. And so, um, I don't – you can't just pinpoint it on one thing. Um, maybe we gave him too much time on plays, and the quarterback's around there scrambling around and can't cover forever. So, um, it's not just one thing. Um, I just know – I know the guys – in their heart and their and they believe they, they can uh, play at a high level and um, it's football they have good they have scholarship players and they have good athletes and so as much as teams throw um, some teams are going to get get yards as long as they don't get in the end zone we're, we're good with it all right left side second row hey pk bob Ballou, cbs austin right here um Sark's talked a lot in the last month about the culture, the development of, of the love and the vulnerability and those kind of things. How do you describe your relationship with your players and just your personality when it comes to understanding what your, your defense needs? Yeah, I'm more of a reserved guy on the staff. Um, but when I do, uh, when I do speak, uh, I, I think maybe it, it, it resonates more because everybody's looking around sort of like, where'd this come from? But, um, yeah, we all, at the end of the day, we all are working to get better. And as coaches, we're trying to get these guys to play to the best of their ability. And, um, and then when, you, when you, you pair that with what you're doing, you know, how, how their uh, family's doing, you know, the, the relationships you build with them and, and what you talk about off the field, away from football, it all matters. And um, I just think um, – it's been a, it's been a, a journey. It's been a, a lot of work in in building that trust and that connection over the last few years. And I think um, when when you build trust, they believe they believe. And then when you start playing well, they, it it generates confidence. And then you got that synergy that um, gets you to to something like this. All right, right side, front row. Coach Krakowski, Terry Middleton, Horns Illustrated. So you've had several weeks to kind of prepare for this game, knowing you know you probably have extreme confidence in that front line, and there's been some challenges in the secondary. Since you've had this time to practice and prepare, are you equally as confident in both the secondary and the, as you are in the front line? Oh, definitely. Um, we don't. You don't get to this spot without 
um, guys showing that they can do it. Um, you know, I, everything's everything gets talked about the the pass defense, and yeah, we'd like to be better in that. Um, but at the end of the day, it comes. There's a lot more to it than just that, right? Um, we've been great against the run. We've been good in the red zone. We've been good on third down, and and the the situations that matter that get they, that gets the ball back for the offense. We've been able to execute and and perform. Um, so. I, I know I know the guys have the confidence to do it, and um, they're fired up for this challenge because we're, we're going to be playing a lot of talented, very talented, good receivers, and um, we can't wait to to get out there and see what, see what we can do. All right, left side in the middle, uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Pete, if you can look back two we years are. ago, you know, it was kind of the roughest start uh, probably you can imagine you know, taking over a new job with Sark here. Uh, can you kind of trace the, your satisfaction and how you've kind of come from that first year to, I don't know, maybe having one of the best defense you've ever had? I don't know. Yeah, it's just, it, <clears throat> I've been doing this for 35 years and there's great seasons and there's tough seasons. And then um, it always comes back to, it, 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 football is football. Don't make it more than it is and stick to the process of growing and getting better. Um, and then you go out on, on Saturday and you, you go out there and put it all out there and you're either good enough or you're not. And then you, it, whether you win or lose, you come back and you do it this, the same process again. And as human beings, that, that can be hard when you're, when you're losing. Um, and then obviously when you're winning, it becomes easier, um, um, more enjoyable. But um, yeah, it's the it's the process of you know putting the defense together, working the fundamentals, the techniques, and then and getting everybody on the same page. And you do it day in and day out. And and then after this year, we start the process all over again. And so, um, yeah, yeah, had 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 we had some good ones at Boise and Washington, and this is definitely. Right up there with them, for sure. All right, right side, front row. Hey, Coach, uh, Thomas Jones, the Austin American Statesman. This is probably the most productive passing attack you've seen since Oklahoma. How's your secondary, specifically, you know, your pass defense, better <clears throat> equipped to hold up against receivers? And what areas of improvement have you seen in the pass defense since that OU game? Just better understanding of um, the leverage and you know, we've, we've tweaked some things in the back end that, that have helped them. Um, but then they're going to catch the ball. we got to get them on the ground, right? And so when, when we tackle, right, we have a, and don't give up explosive plays. Um, and we try and force these, these uh, offenses to drive the length of the field. We're, we're pretty good. Um, but it's, it's all about control, tackling and controlling the explosive plays. Um, and then you know, there's the, the the deep balls are they're one on ones, right? And they do a good job. We got to go up and compete, and we got to got to play the hands, play the ball, and um, there's no no magic magic answer to that other than competing and you know being where you're supposed to be, and then at the at the at the when you're high pointing the ball, right? And making a play on the ball, playing the hands, and hopefully getting the ball stripped out. All right, Coach, we have time for two more questions. We're going to start on the right side in the middle. Uh, Andrea Adelson, ESPN.com. Coach, you mentioned earlier familiarity with playing this team. How much does it help that you've already faced Penix uh, last season in the bowl game? And also, do you feel like there's a greater motivational level for your defense to play better than last time against them? Yeah, as competitors, you 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 always um, want to get another shot at, at somebody that that's beaten you, and so that's no different in this in this instance. <clears throat> and then I haven't already played him. <clears throat> Just you know, we've watched him a lot, and he does an outstanding job of getting the ball out and from <clears throat> multiple platforms. Right? He 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 could be uh, looking one way and then f flick the ball the other way, and he's got got good touch and good accuracy and he's got really good receivers that he's thrown to so um 
yeah, we know how good he is from last year playing him and watching him all year long. Um, we, we know what kind of challenge we got on, uh, on, on Monday. Uh, last question, back left side, yeah. back row. Uh, Ted Lewis from the Orleans Times. Pick you two things. Uh, first of all, can you confirm the suspension of Derek Williams, and how does that affect the team at least for one half? Also, you were asked about uh, Washington's offensive line winning the Joe Moore Award. What does, are they the best offensive line you face this year, and what makes them so effective? Yeah, so, yeah, Derek's uh, won't be in the first half um, from the, uh, the targeting penalty from the last game. And yeah, next man up, um, and he'll he'll be ready to go in the second half. And then um, yeah, the O line uh, at Washington has done an outstanding job all season long, um, keep keeping uh, Penix on his on his feet, and um, you know in the run game. And the uh, offensive line coach is one of my best friends, and so uh, we know each other very well. And uh, he's, he's done an outstanding job, and. We'll have to go out on Monday and see how we can do against them. Thank you, Coach.